Hello and welcome back everyone to a new episode of Lawmaster Leveling here with me, Sneaky Bard, and our rogue, uh, Tafrona. I was forgetting her name there. You can see that there's been a brief delay uh, from last time when I was recording. Um, I had some issues to deal with on the real life front which kept me from doing any more recordings but that's all dealt with so we should be all fine and the new updating schedule however is also up on the channel so you have the December review there uh, relevant for the WoW updates it's basically that I'm going to update WoW twice a week instead of once every day that's also related to that real life stuff sadly but hey you'll still get your updates we are in the Karnum Glade uh, here because we desperately need a repair guy so while we're here let's pick up the rest of these pardon me quests and then chug along on our journey through the Desolus and I am still a bit torn on whether to put on heirlooms on this character because the new updating schedule means that I don't get to play on her as often as I'd like. Let's grab the flight point. Which means that since we're on a clock uh, in regards to Battle for Azeroth launching, I'd say within a year, uh, I want this character to be 110 by then. Peace. And the question is, will we manage to do that? Now, the easy answer would be just grab your heirlooms and be done with it. But if we do the heirlooms, then I might not have enough time questing in each and every zone to be able to basically tell the stories that the zone has to offer so for the moment i am not going to grab any heirlooms uh while i think on the issue we have two quests here we have pulling weeds and blood theory so let's see what these actually want us to do for those of you who are not familiar with this, this is actually a new addition, Condoms Glade, to the Desolus. So the Sonarian Circle here has managed to finally make a dent into the Desolus that spreads across Desolus, how very eponymous of Blizzard, and actually revive some of the nature that should be here, used to be here. Anyway, let's see what Blood Theory uh, asks us to do, or rather, why it asks us to get 10 blood-filled leeches. The land is not all that has changed in Desolus. Oh, you don't say. Here, the wildlife has responded to a new environment in strange and sometimes exciting ways. I'm particularly interested in the rejuvenated thunder lizards that roam just to the west. I need a sample of their blood. You may begin helping me by using this jar of leeches on a few of them. Once they filled on the blood of those beasts, return them to me. Ugh, I've never been, uh, like, infected, or whatever you say, uh, by ble uh, leeches. But somehow I don't imagine it to be very, very nice. There's that Stephen King book filmatization coming of age story with like three kids following a regular track and getting lost in a swamp and coming out of the water full with leeches that that is enough in terms of how many uh, or enough in terms of experience with leeches that I want to have we need to apparently also kill these let's see why with such an abrupt change to the ecology yes indeed you're druids you should know better than to do this abruptly but I guess you got too excited it is to be expected that some of the flora and fauna don't react as well as we'd hope. The uprooted lashes are a troublesome example of this. Roaming the fields to the east and south, they are a detriment to the region and must be disposed of. While you're about, please deal with any of these pests that you find. <sighs> Druids, making up us clear up their mess. So, this is however a very good example, uh, not example, but opportunity, oh dear. Too far away. Okay, you disappeared. Uh, opportunity to uh, talk about the Scenarian Circle as... Okay, you're still going to attack us. So this is going to result in us killing you anyway. Um, this is a very good opportunity to talk about the Scenarian Circle. So who are the Scenarian Circle? The Scenarian Circle are the order of druids that spans across both factions, so Horde and Alliance. Uh, composed mainly of Tauren and Night Elves, but with the 
sort of recent addition of trolls and Vulgan being able to be druids in Cataclysm, it also includes these races. Where's that leech going? Don't tell me it's like... Okay, there you are. Uh, and what is their duty? Their duty is basically to make sure that the balance of, uh, in terms of, or the natural balance, let's put it that way, of things on Azeroth remains as it should be. And in order to reach that, they sometimes adopt very extreme measures. So there is a quest, let me remember where exactly. Uh, let's kick that. No, that wasn't kick. Um, there's a quest. I think it wasn't. Our bags are full. Okay, we need to go sell as well. Apparently. Inventory yeah. is full. Uh, there's a quest in Outlands. I think, if I remember correctly, in Zangamash, where the druids ask you to slay a whole bunch of the natural flora and fauna that has essentially gone crazy. So sometimes they even ask you to call a large amount of the natural wildlife in order to protect that balance. The druids themselves were uh, founded through Malfurian Storm Rage. The first druid, who was taught by Cenarion, Illidan, the main character in Legion here, was also taught by Cenarion, as what those of you who've done the quests with him know. Uh, but he ended up not being humble enough, shall we put it this way. To be to continue tutelage under scenarios so he went on and became a mage and then later on a demon hunter instead um, the biggest shall we say concentrations of scenario circle druids on Azeroth are mainly well now here in the Desolus Moonglade obviously which is their base of operations where they have these barrow dens where they all go to sleep every couple of uh, every couple of I don't know why and every once in a while that was the expression I was looking for except if you're Malfurian then you're sleeping for well hundreds of years essentially taking a prolonged nap of hibernation and that's also where the ancients that are essentially manifestations of uh, various aspects of nature have their home Apart from that, they're also in the Felwood, trying to cure the devastation left by the Legion during the War of... No, was it? No, that was the Third War, where they rampaged through Felwood, yeah, during the Third War. Uh, and bring balance back to those woods. They're also in Silitus, because during the Hiraj invasion of, the, of Kalimdor, they were the ones who basically were left in charge with dealing with the um, with the Kiraj threat that lurked just behind the walls of Ankiraj. Oh, we want to put our leeches here. Where else are they? I mean, they have an expedition in Outland in various places, mainly... Okay, apparently I cannot loot you. Strange. Uh, various places out there, mainly Zangamash. Alright. And it's too far away. regarding the ancients, um, we get to know them more in the Cataclysm zones because they're called up uh, to fight for us again. And some of them are also in Legion Quest, especially during the Druid Order Hall. And as already said, they are manifestations of nature's power uh, or various aspects, mostly various different ways nature is powerful in on Azeroth and they fought for the oops, forgot to put the leech there fought for the night elves um, during the war of the ancients that's also why it's called the war of the ancients because the ancients actually partook in it and ever since that war, they've mostly left the mortal realm alone. Uh, we have the wolf ancient, uh, Godrim, who is very interesting in that sense that he's very strongly connected to Varian Vryn. Varian Vryn is his champion. He, His aspect is basically 
uncontroll or not uncontrollable rage, but rage and uh, great fighting prowess that usually is uncontrollable by mere mortals, but Varian managed to uh, control that rage during his time as a gladiator in the Horde arena. So the way Varian managed to uh, get to that situation was basically he was abducted by Onyxia, the daughter of Deathwing, we already talked about Deathwing, who wanted to take control of the throne of Stormwind by basically... First. Oops, we didn't want to kill the leech. Uh, being a grey evidence behind the throne while serving on the Regency Council for Varian's son Anduin Vryn. And she had abducted him and Varian managed to escape and through various um, circumstances that I will not all spoil for you here since there's an excellent uh, manga on this topic he uh, got he escaped and he got captured again by a orc gladiator master and team put into a team together with Brawl Beamantle another uh, druid actually was instrumental in saving Malfurion from the Emerald Dream. Oh, yeah, we forgot the leeches again. Uh, and exposing Fandral Staghelm, the previous leader of the Druids, as a fraud. Uh, and Verisa, uh, who is the rogue character in Hearthstone, a Blood Elf rogue. And they, they became fast friends in the gladiator pits, basically, and Varian slowly regained his memory because he suffered from amnesia and uh, also got to the point where the rage that he thought, or the fighting prowess and the rage that this whole situation unleashed in him got the attention of Godrim and he basically became his champion. When Varian then, spoilers, died. God damn it, why are we killing these leeches? This is not, not good. Um, died at the uh, pre, not pre-event, but like the launching event of Legion. Godrim also went into seclusion uh, because of that. Since he basically got a bit sad. Uh, other interesting not in this case people, but races linked to Godrim are obviously the Worgen, who uh, were theorized to have started out as a sect of druids that had taken on the uh, likeness of Godrim, or his like, um, what would you call that, his form, but his rage proved too strong for them and they lost control of who they were later and in order to rectify this situation Banana they were range. banished to a pocket of the emerald dream where archmage arugo i'm talking too much i'm killing all these leeches when i shouldn't found them summoned them to azeroth to help fight the scourge invasion of gilneas successfully i might add so let's do this at a range then. Uh, and but that's also bringing the Worgen curse to to Gilneas in the process. So the Worgen that we have in game are also sort of the kids of um, Godrim. Uh, all the druid forms are also linked to the ancients. They draw their strength from them. So. If you think of it in the way of that the bear form is the form of Ursoc, the cat form is Ashamane, um, the, the, what is it, the storm crown is, n it's not Illyria because that's the uh, Windrunner elf, but the, whatever the harpy ancient's name is, something of A, she's in Hygel, uh, but yeah, it will come back to me. Uh, and the Moonkin itself is, um, I mean, I always thought of it as being a manifestation of Elune, but Elune herself is not an ancient. I'm actually more inclined to think that she's a Naga. 
uh, or maybe if you follow Noble, maybe she's even uh, the, um, the 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 what do you call it? World Soul of Azroth. But yeah, let's not kill the leech here. Oh dear, that was something got connected to my computer. The USB. There, yeah, let's just connect it for. Uh, for good, that way it won't start doing these types of noises. Alright. So yeah, that's basically how the scenario circle. Okay, good, I don't need to kill these anymore. I can. We're just grinding our lovely rested XP here away. That's what we're doing. Let, let's say that that's what we're doing, just so that this doesn't look too haphazard. But yeah, that's how the scenario circle relate to most of the big lore characters uh, in game. We already talked a bit about Fandral Staghelm as well. So as I uh, told Brawl Bear Mantle, Bear Mantle, not Bear Mantle, sorry, <laughs> pronunciation Bear Mantle, since it refers to the animal, not to the lovely beverage, um, exposed him as a traitor or a fraud, however we want to put that. Uh, so, Fandral was one of Malfurion's um, students, and when Malfurion became lost in the Emerald Dream, he basically went to sleep there because he sensed a corruption, got caught in the snare of Xavius. Yeah, Malfurion has a um, habit of getting captured, and then Tyranda has to come and save him. I think he's just there to uh, subvert the whole, uh, what I call Mario Peaches trope, so in this case, um, Tyranda is Mario and Malfurium is Peaches. Anyway, so Fandral took his seat as Archdruid and it turned out that um, there was this daily quest that he asked us players to do for a, I think it was just a bit of reputation, to gather some pollen of some plants in Ungora and he used that to keep Malfurion uh, asleep. And the reason he did that was because during the Kiraj Wars, which I already mentioned a bit, he lost his son to the leader or the general of the Kiraj, and that drove him slowly mad with grief. He kept seeing his son and his wife in his um, dreams and slowly his waking hours as well, as the old gods basically whispered. To him, I mean, I don't remember if the book Storm Rage actually explicitly says it, that it was old gods that whispered to him, or whether it was just Xavius, since Xavius is the Nightmare Lord, and I mean, Fandral is connected to the Nightmare as well, but Xavius is connected to the old gods, so whoever did the whispering, in some way or form, the old gods uh, influenced Fandral, and what happened was he he then uh, at the end of the third war when uh, if you've played Warcraft 3 you use the power of um, Nordrasil that was the original world tree to yeah I think so if that's not the name just correct me in the comments but you know the original knight of world tree that they got at the end of the war of the ancients that gave them you know immortality and all these lovely things they use the power to defeat that's powers to defeat Archimand and then obviously that was a big shock for the night elf society in general to lose all of that so uh, the druids essentially had a debate whether to uh, plant a new tree and uh, Malfurion was against this, but then he became lost in the dream, so his side had no compelling speaker to argue his case. And what instead what uh, wound up to happen was that Fandral ended up winning. He was on the side of the Night Elves who wanted to plant a new tree. This one, however, did not get the blessing of the dragon aspects, which made the original tree so special. So it was always sort of flawed and corrupted. Um, uh, but th this is the tree that became uh, Teldrassil, where the Night Elf starting area now is, and Darnassus, and what is essentially going to be burned down with the 
beginning of War for, A uh, War for Azeroth. Yeah, uh, and during that time, Malf um, not Malfurion, Fandral slowly became corrupted, and when he was finally deposed, and Malfurion took his rightful place as the leader of the Scenarian Circle and the Druids, Fandral um, basically created. Oh, that's our timer. But let's finish the story. A new sect of Druids, the Flame Druids which you encounter in Hygel as well and in the raid uh, for the Firelands and actually managed to win over quite a few influential druids and green dragons as well to his cause um, and what then basically happened was <coughs> sorry that was a sneeze let's try and edit that out or well we'll see Anyway, what ended up happening was um, we as the player then had to step in with Cataclysm and the Firelands raid and kill Fandral for good. Let's see if we can't find... Oh, we need nine more aloe thistles that can wait for the next episode. And that is basically the story of Fandral Stackhelm. Poor, poor guy. Lost his son, his only son. And his wife, driven mad, betrayed his teacher, and ended up killing, uh, killed by us players, as so many villains in World of Warcraft. Anyway, that is it for the episode, so as always, my name's been Sneaky Bard. Thank you for watching, you have been absolutely awesome. If you did like this episode, do give me a like and do subscribe, and do remember to share the word about the channel and the content I'm producing here to anyone you know who might be interested. But I will say goodbye now and thank you. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye.